we're about to go to Bonds Island. Bonds Island, in our opinion, based on the evidence we have, is the single most important place for African Americans outside of America. Why? Because from this small place in Africa, tens of thousands of people were taken to a small part of the America over a long period of time, enough for people from my country, Sierra Leone, to be able to influence Gola culture in names, language, loan words, diets, even dancing. Many, many of Sierra Leonean culture and heritage was transferred to the Americas. And that's what we're doing when we go to Bones Island. We want to show the world that this place where history sleeps, like I said earlier, is the single most important place for African Americans outside of America. And if you doubt me, report me with evidence. called Gates Tower. So all at these gates, this is how you would enter Bonds Island and exit. But what I want to point out is that at this gate, it was manned by two armed guards at all time, 24 seven. They were up here and they would let people in by opening the gates. But also these two guards would have their eyes down river at all times looking for movement. Ships. <laughs> they have a, a fireplace in there. Can you imagine? A fireplace in Africa. <laughs> but they didn't use it. It was just to beautify their, the, house. Yeah, the house. So fireplace, fake fireplace, just to show some opulence. Over here, this is where you see into the main slave yard, which we're going to next. Or we're going to go around there next. But you can see slaves in here and you can just pick who you like. Now, there's a lady that came here in the 1790s. Her name was Anna Maria Falconbridge. Anna Maria Falconbridge was here for dinner once from upstairs, right? Uh, she said that uh, in her notes, there was all kinds of wine and food. You know, you live in the bourgeoisie style. But she happened to walk by one of the windows upstairs. And when she looked outside, this is how she described what she saw. She said she saw naked black men chained together in groups of 10 and the trough of rice they were using to satisfy their craving for food. So the probably 200, 300 men in groups of 10, naked, chained together, and just one trough of rice in the middle of them where they would eat like animals. Imagine when it rained, what happened to those guys? Because it, it wasn't covered. So it would rain on them. And in Sierra Leone, when it rains, it pours. But we're not here to talk about the rain. <laughs> it's about the guys that were in here. They were chained together and eating off a trough of rice. That, that's what she saw while she was basking in opulence. See the contrast? But you remember I said that uh, we had castle uh, slave trade? Yeah. Right here, where we're standing, around this area, is where they would come and sell the Africans. And the chief agent would come. I mean, they had a particular way to, to do things here, right? They would test them if they, are, you know, if they have their senses together, so they'll do something to make them jolt or whatever. There was one time that they used to brand them. Brand with an iron. Yeah? And it was, uh, we, we found a branding tool here on this island when the archaeologists were doing some stuff, an S. So if you had an S in you, it was for Sierra Leone. It wasn't just, and they didn't just brand Sierra Leone. I mean, I guess they branded well, everywhere. Superman. Oh, Superman, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but S, and also at some point they had one that said R-A-C-E, the acronym R-A-C-E, RACE, which stands for the Royal African Company of England. Oh, okay. You know, the slave trade in those days was backed by the monarchy. Yeah. The British monarchy supported uh, and promoted the, the slave trade. Mm. This arguably was the single most important thing 
uh, operation here on Bones Island. Why? Because they had a dead bolt, dead man lock system. Are we familiar with that? IT. I mean, if you want to go to uh, some uh, data centers, for example, they have doors where you step in into one side and they lock it behind you before they open up the others. So who had asked a question about the riots? Someone had asked a question about, was it you that asked a question about the riot? Uprising. Up. So again, two officers with guns. A, there was a ledge here and they would, you know, uh, open up the gates when it was time to feed. So, so say for example, I'm bringing in food now. I will talk to these guys. They will ask, who goes there? You tell them who you are and what you're doing. And if they know your voice, I guess, they will let you in, in here. Over here is the women's slave yard to my left, and to my right is the men's slave yard. Mm. So once I enter in here, those guys ab above me will lock this door before they open any of these. Like it there. Because if they open this and you want to run out, this door is locked, right? You can't get anywhere. But if these two doors are open at the same time, I mean, yeah, those guys can do some stuff. And the reason why they did this was because they were riots. Even in not here, in other parts where they were doing business, so they learned from that. Mm. All right. All day long, what they said you used to hear was all kinds of sounds. People crying, you know, because yeah, they know their lives have changed forever. Kids with mom, parents, yeah. And what was the what was the ages of the children? They they would differ. I mean, uh, Priscilla, for example, was yeah. ten years old yeah. Yeah. in 1757 when they took her from here. So women slave here, yeah. And guess what? Don't quote me on this because I don't know for sure. But they had a hut in here. A what? A hut. A hut. This uh -oh. Two rooms. And they didn't have one in the men's slave yard. Mm. And they had a route to walk from Bunce Island House through the garden. They, they have a formal garden back there. This was where you would find the first golf course in Africa. Two hole, two holes, a two hole golf course. Mm. Was back there somewhere. At well, that point, you start going around there. But if they had uh, a hut in the women's and children's slave yard, and they didn't have one in the men's slave yard, I want to let your imagination flow. Sergeant and Oswald, the company that ran Bonds Island at the most profitable time, I mean, these guys were masters of the business. And they didn't only work with. Uh, Bones Island and Africans. They brought things from India. They were engaged in uh, uh, Asia and other parts of the world, the Caribbean. So, for example, the African leaders, you know what was the most important? Because they didn't have cash then. They weren't buying slaves with money. It was a bar the system. Who could guess what the Africans wanted more than anything else? No? We're, we're, we're taking rice away. What did they want here? Guns. Cloth. Who said cloth? That's it. Cloth, especially from India and Turkey. The African chief won clothing. And that's how they would trade their people. In my heart, I believe uh, the America, America itself was, uh, was built by, by us. Because we set the stage to put it on that catapult that it enjoys today. Because rice was the first successful industry in America. Mm -hmm. South Carolina was the richest of the colonies. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So we built that city. Yeah, America. So cannons, seven shots, seven shots. Wartime. Let me tell you how they would do, uh, how they would operate if they've been attacked. <coughs> they would fire their cannons back when, if the French were attacking them. Because the French are going to come at shore, right? So they would stall them. The uh, Bronze Island chief agent and his workers would stall these guys, thinking that they were going to put up a fight. Whilst in the meantime, they are packing up all their wares to make us an escape. I'll show you back there where they would go to a friendly river. And by the time the French would get here, no one would be here. Yeah. There was one guy called Old Plunkett. He was a chief agent here, but he was a drunk. So he, yeah, he get he got wasted every day. But I mean, Bones Island, he had to he had to drink living on Bones Island. He had to, right? So yeah, I need one right now. You need one right now? Yes, yes. Uh, so Old Plunkett attacked Bones Island once. Uh, I mean, Black Bart, the most feared pirate of his time, attacked Bones Island once when Old Plunkett was here. Old Plunkett, he was drunk, so he didn't give a hoot about that guy. 
He fired his cannons. He ran out of cannonballs. He started putting all kinds of metal in there. Just firing at the pirates. Guess what? By the time uh, it, it was done firing, he didn't have enough time to escape. And the pirates caught him right here on the island. And Black Bart behead, well, he was going to cut his head off. He was already in position. But the guy, he cussed at Black Bart so much that even Black Bart's followers so wait a minute here. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who is bold enough to curse at Black Bart, as yeah. this guy has, deserves to live. Oh, <laughs> that is recorded in the British archives. Yeah. When we talk about uh, an agent who saved his life, his life uh, through the dint of swearing. <laughs> Africans were brought from far and near to the slave trade prison. They all feared Africans on slave ships last saw their homeland when they left from bones. Island. The British built of this castle, it once was grand, but now the ruins are all that stand. Africans on slave ships last saw their homeland when they left from bones. We have an organization called Farm Boutique, which means family tree in English. And what we do as an organization is reach out to descendants of Sierra Leone and try to reconnect with them and hopefully bring them back, not just to do tours, but to try to do something around economic empowerment activities. So that's our overall uh, goal or vision. Uh, on this particular trip that we're doing now, uh, we refer to it as the Sierra Leone Gola Connection, the next step. So we've had about four interventions between Sierra Leoneans and, and Gola Geechee people, but this is the fifth one, and we're going a little deeper, so we refer to it as the next step. Now, on our trip are Gola leaders, cultural activists, preservationists, academia, and everyday people. So we are here to teach Gaulers about, our, about their origins and where their Gaula culture originated from. Now, also, and importantly, also, is that Gaula, Gaula Geechee people will be teaching Sierra Leoneans about their own culture. So I sit here on Bonds Island, uh, where we have a slave fortress that sent tens of thousands uh, of Africans, enslaved Africans, to the colonies, South Carolina and 60 years later, Georgia. So what we want these group of people to, uh, to do is what they normally do when they do their work, right? Because like I said, some of them are performers, cultural activists, they will learn some of our culture and they will tell that story when they go back to um, uh, America. So. It's a two-way thing, just like we have a two-way connection between Gaulers and Sierra Leoneans. This particular tour has a two-way kind of uh, approach.